So tonight I'd like to compare the uh, Sanjim to the SDR just to see how they're performing. So I'm going to start here. Well, I'm just below it, but here we'll wait for it to beep. But uh, we'll start on the 49 meter band and I'll probably go up to the 49 through the 25 maybe. We'll see, maybe I'll do the 21. We'll see what's coming in tonight and see what I find. I probably won't stop unless there's something interesting to uh, to share with you. And then see what I get in. And then we'll I'll flip over to the SDR on the Mac and see if we can pull in the same signals there. That's really all I'm going to do. I'm just curious as to what the, uh, what the comparison is. Obviously, we'll talk a little bit about what the equipment is. Um, we'll talk about the radio first. This is a Sanjian 909X2. The antenna is an MLA30+. Plus. And at the moment, it's split. I'm not using any additional amplifiers or uh, transformers between the SDR and the radio. So there is going to be some loss because of that. I can detect it, but it's not very high. And in any event, the uh, Sanjian here has a has a gain control on it, but that's part of it. Uh, the bigger issue there is that under some circumstances, there appears to be noise from the SDR that makes its way into the radio. So what I'm actually going to do is leave the SDR plugged in to the uh, antenna, but I'm actually going to unplug it from the power source. So it's not connected to the computer and it has no power on it. That should solve that problem. And we'll talk about what the SDR is uh, when I get to that section. Okay, well I've run through, I've actually run all the way up through the 19 meter band. There's nothing on the on the 21 and 19 meter bands, at least it's coming in strongly right now. I haven't hunted for weak stuff. I haven't played around with, even I haven't narrowed the bandwidth even. And just to give you some idea, on the 49 meter band, I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight um, strong signals, right? The 41 meter band, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, yeah, five. On the 31 meter band, one, two, three, four, five, six. One of those is a little questionable. And on the 25 meter band, I got one. I'm not including the time signal at 10 megahertz, which was coming in just fine. One, two. Okay, and I was counting the time signal then. All right, we're including the time signal at uh, right on, on 31 meters because it's right at the top. Okay, so what I'm going to do is get set up. There's nothing surprising, right? I mean, if you go down, you know, what's really strong here in Toronto tonight is the usual stuff. Right now, we've got the gain up too high, but there we go. Right, you know, you've got Japan coming in from France is just blasting in here, right? And, and, uh, and the usual stuff. I didn't see anything very surprising, but I will say that the signal quality tonight is excellent. It's the, it's the 27th of May, and uh, we're just after 10 o'clock here in Toronto, so just after 2 UTC. All right, so let me get the computer set up. We'll plug the um, SDR in, and we'll talk a little bit about that. Excuse me. We're going to call that OK. So what you can see is that my SDR, we're writing cubic SDR, obviously, uh, which is the normal choice I gather on the Mac. Oh, again, I don't have a whole lot of experience with the SDR, of course, and that's what this is about. It's about me getting more experience using this device. I have an RTL SDR, the real deal, ordered from SDR blog and all of that. Um, I don't have any fancy hardware, so we're going to go with direct sampling, which is QBranch on this. Um, we'll leave all these other uh, elements in the default setting. We'll keep the sampling rate at 2.56. I don't seem to do very well making it go faster. We want to start down 
at um, about 5.8, which is where we started before. We want to put this on AM. I'm going to turn automatic gain off. You don't get changing the gain here doesn't do anything um, in direct sampling mode, but this still gives you better control and this is a more meaningful display. Sometimes with weak signals, automatic gain does seem to help a bit. Okay, so let's see if we can find what, uh, what we we're looking, look, listening to with the radio. We're still in the same hour, so it's uh, a 10.26, so just a few minutes after. Never, ever, ever going to this world to the devil. Never. He said the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So there's 5890, right, on the 49 meter band. Right, and, you know, and then the next the one. And the souls of men, and we faster in the taste of new preachers. 5935. You got insomnia? And we had that, or I had that on the radio. Oops. This is very easy to do to change the bandwidth by accident when you're sliding around. Make that a bit bigger. Five nine five zero. We had that. That's Cuba. We have a carrier, but not much on it. That's not terribly unusual. We can use our fine tuning here. But I will say that's coming in. And that's Radio Maritime. There's Japan. Or Radio Nippon. Anyway, I won't subject you to me going through all of this. What I'm going to do is continue going through, compare what I'm getting so far, so good. Anything that came in on the Sanjian is coming through here. And uh, and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so here we are at the top of the dial. And the numbers are interesting. So in general, the SDR, and keeping in mind that this is a low-end SDR in direct sampling move, mode. Now it's a good night, signals are strong. Um, managed to pick up at the 49 meter band. Sorry, I just dropped that. It managed to pick up seven stations compared to eight for this Angian. On the 41 meter band, it picked one up one, two, three, four, five compared to six for the Sanjian. Now I should say there's some complexity here because there are images. Um, is this a good spot to find one? Not really, but you'll see images of other stations, particularly some of the stronger American broadcasters just all over the uh, AM dial, I mean the, the shortwave dial. Uh, you used to see local AM radio all over here, but I've had to put an AM filter in and that solved that problem. If you get into the FM range, you start to see local FM all over the place, but that's again, not surprising in this location. Uh, so they were so in 41 meter band, it's six to five. In the 31 meter band, it's one, it's six again for the SDR and six for the um, for this Angian as well. I will say one of the signals I think I picked up with the SDR was different, and I'm actually fairly sure that's an image, although I didn't go and find out what it is. So I think that that's probably five for the SDR there. And they both picked up this, as one would expect. 
So, I think it does better than I was expecting. It keeps up reasonably well. There's uh, not too much question that a relatively expensive um, portable radio is definitely more sensitive. Um, many of these signals were better on the uh, Sanjian than they were coming out of my speakers from the computer here. And again, that's not very surprising. But it does definitely suggest that you don't have to get much more performance before, you know, this setup is going to be on par or outperforming a, you know, it's it's a $300 radio, right? The Sanjian, the Canadian dollars anyway. That's a good price. So I'm impressed so far because the SDR is 30 bucks, right? Yeah, so, um, so I'm pretty impressed so far. Um, I do think it's probably quite sensitive to the antenna setup and this antenna setup is, yeah, it's okay. It's as well as you're gonna get, I think. It's as good as it's gonna get, I think, in this noisy environment. But um, there are other options and can play with that over time. So, well, there are limitations, particularly around these image, what I've been calling images, which are actually harmonics, probably, of the broadcasts um, showing up all over the, the band. But if you're kind of aware and looking for them, they're not so distracting. But they do harm the SDR as a way of finding new stations because you end up thinking that you found, oh, this is something cool. And then you look at it and you go, like right here, right? Okay, so let's turn that on. It's nothing, right? Now, yeah, that's probably just some inter local interference, but then if you, let's see, can I find that, right? What do we got? Well, that's literally just noise and for some reason the algorithm that samples it you can see there's a almost looks like an FM peak right and then when it gets sampled over here that sums up to show a peak but it's, it's just relatively broadband interference centered around 12.42 or you know some weak FM signal that it can't decode but I doubt it Right, so there are some things, and uh, and let's see if I can find a good example. So there's this is a real station. Well, you see, you know, something like that shoots up. Is that really anything? Probably not, right? So there are some oddities in terms of how it does things that make it not quite as good for searching for stuff than you might think, right? But on the other hand, you know, that's real. This should be, this should be the time signal. Yeah, you can hear the bass bumps in there. There are the ticks. So, some of it's real. Again, it's a pretty good night, so these things aren't showing as much as you might otherwise see. Anyway, I'm still learning my way around using it, but I think the, since my purpose in buying this particular SDR was proof of concept, I think we've proven the concept that it can come, you know, just for high frequency listening. It's, this is pretty interesting, right? This is definitely worth playing with, even if you're not interested in, you know, any of the VHF and stuff, which of course is what most people play around with, with uh, SDRs. Okay, thanks for watching.